Wait, so where are you at the moment? Well, I'm in Los Angeles. So I'm actually calling you. Well, call, well yeah, we're, we're Zooming from Los Angeles. Um, yeah, it's beautiful outside. It's, you know, early in the morning. And uh, yeah, it, today's President's Day. So it's like a holiday. Okay. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, well, God. So I'm making you work on your day off. <laughs> oh, my God. No, we're releasing a record. Are you kidding me? I've been doing interviews uh, all this month. And it's it's a pleasure to speak to you. So, yes, anytime. Oh, you too. Well, Melina, welcome to Life in Six Strings. It's so good to have you on the show. Um, and, and so you're in LA at the moment and it's lovely weather I can see. Um, so tell Thank us you. a little bit about kind of how this journey started for you. I like to kind of start at the beginning because I think it paints yep. like a picture of who, like where you've come from and why you are who you are musically. Gotcha. Well, you know what? I actually... Um... I was born in Ohio and then I end up growing up in Minnesota. So, of course, that's Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, the land of uh, Prince and, you know, all the, the funk and the rock, uh, which I love of music. But I grew up in a family band. So my mom and dad were always musicians. And um, so my dad and my mom always had just different instruments around the house. And there were always incredible artists around the house. So it was an uncommon, you know, my parents were, their their band played with lots of people and were support. So they opened up for, you know, big acts. So, you know, like Larry Graham and Graham Central Station and Patrice Russian and, you know, Babyface would uh, come by our house. So, you know, George Clinton, all these things just was, was a part of like normal life to us. So um, I think maybe for me, like about nine years old, my dad gave me my first guitar. And I remember he gave it to me like a right-handed person. And I was, I was kind of like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it, right? So when he left the room, I took the guitar and I flipped it upside down. And then I started playing that way. And for me, that just felt really good. And when he came back, he was like, Melina, this is backwards. Nobody plays like this. You can't play this way. And I'm like, daddy, this is good. Like this works. And then he was like, I mean, Jimi Hendrix, but I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think Jimmy is stringing it upside down. So I just went with it because naturally I'm left-handed. Yeah. And, you know, my, my dad would always say, you know, Melina, I, I don't know why we just didn't buy you a left-handed guitar. But then he goes on and he says, you know, I just always knew that you would be able to take a right-handed guitar and flip it upside down and play it and you'd have more choices. So I was like, you know, that makes sense. You know, because as we all know, as you know, being a lefty, there aren't a lot of left-handed models, um, you know, so it's good to see that, you know, I think now we're starting to see a lot more models uh, come into play with different corporations, but, you know, um, yeah. And then for me, I just wanted to consist, you know, just get with better players. And as, as you know, I got older, I would, you know, get with different people and learn different licks. And then for me, just, um, yeah, I just really liked it. And I guess, you know, uh, my dad showed me a couple of chords and then just off I went and, you, you know, and, and I, I guess I'm just rambling, but musically there was an eclectic palette of all music. I mean, everything you could imagine. And I had the, 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 my family, my dad is the guy who literally likes to break down, hey, do you hear this song? This is what's going on. This is why this guitar part is doing this. Do you hear this? Oh, this nice. is the vocals. So I would, so it just really made me fall in love with music and fall in love with uh, the instrument. And then once I realized that, um, oh, I play, I'm left-handed and I play this way, there's nothing wrong with it. That I just, for myself, I was like, I'm just going to go with it. And I'm so glad I did because for me, I think that that became like part of my calling card because I can't tell you how many people have said, no, you know, I, you know, before I, I say I start really getting my name out there, people would always say, sweetheart, you're holding the guitar wrong. And then I would go, oh, okay. And then I'd take it and flip it upside down and just, you know, start playing. And then they go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Because yeah, so, you still play it that way, don't you? You, you didn't then try and learn it the other way and get a left-handed guitar. I don't even know how yeah. somebody actually does that. I mean, to be honest, because um, at first I said, well, you know what, let me see if this is possible. But I think my brain is just so backwards. And because I was just so stuck on that with this, you know, the skinnier E closer to the top of my head and the thicker E on the bottom and forming my chords the way I form them, I was like, you know what, this works. And every time, like in the beginning, um, even with my coaches, you know, they're right-handed players. I would see what they were doing. And then I would just say, give me a minute. And then I would have to make it work for me. And I just, all, you know how, I guess just from trial and error, you just get used to doing things. Yeah. And I always, for me, I just, 
that was it, you know. And then, of course, you have great players like Eric Gales. And, um, you know, Eric is, yeah, is, a, yeah. is a very, yeah, right, and upside down as well, too. Yeah. So when Eric came to, to visit and stay with my family, it was so cool because, like, we'd have breakfast. And then after breakfast, we'd be jamming. And so I could ask Eric different questions about, like, Eric, how were you doing that? Because I was having some trouble. And then he's like, oh, this is what you want to do. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Because, um, yeah. It must have been a great help because he was on the Hendrix experience with you, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. So he's done a tour. A, um, yeah, many times. A help. Yeah. But, you know, we, the, with the kicker of the Hendrix tour is there were many left-handed players. So so these, I basically me and Eric and Doyle actually play upside down. And I want to say Stan Skibby. So we all, people were always saying that we had our own little language. But then there were also just left-handed players. Uh, Cesar Rojas from Los Lobos, he's a lefty. So he was definitely playing it, you know, strong properly. Um, but yeah, it, it was it, it was always uh, that that for me was always just always the coolest. And then even you know the ones that weren't left handed like Johnny Lang and Kenny Wayne Shepherd, some of my great you know my the just I love those guys. They're incredible. And Kenny Wayne is oh my god, what a beast! Oh, he's amazing. So, I mean, oh my god. So so just um you know just to be around that caliber of talent, and then just they're just the nicest people. And then I'm that person that's always gonna say, show me that link. How are you doing this? Show this to yeah. me. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm always like, no matter what level you are, get around people that are better than you. And then what's so awesome about all those guys is like Eric Johnson, all, they're all incredible, but they all made me feel like I was just as important as them. So they, like when it was time for me to do my set, every one of them would come out and say, let's watch Molina. You know, they were cheering me on. I'm like, this is crazy because they always, you know, they find something that you do and they're like, that's amazing. That, yeah. oh my God. That, you, so uh, to me, I always, you know, just again, people who are just um, obviously incredible, but just nice people and really want to see you win. And but you find that yeah, the guitar no world egos, is, whatever. Yeah, but don't you find the guitar world is like that? It's like I've, you know, I've been playing for a very short time, and and I just feel like I'm now in this little club, and everyone's really supportive. And I mean, you might have a different because you're doing it professionally, but <laughs> I have a different opinion of that. But um, maybe really kind to me because they're like, oh, bless her. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I said, well, no, but the thing is, I'll say this to me, right? I think that, the, like you're saying, certain levels of it, man, you like the ones who I think are just secure with themselves and yeah. they like, they realize they're epic and they, they, there's no ego. Like they're just like, oh my God, you're amazing. Those are great people. Now I've come across some where you're playing, they're playing. And I got to tell you, it just blows me away where, I mean, they just feel this need to want to turn up or need to show that they can do certain things. And I'm always the person that goes, this is insane yeah. because I have hired you to work alongside of me, yet I don't understand why you are turning up your gear so loud and just, I mean, because it, it, I think that um, some people, I mean, I'll be amazed. It, it's amazing. They... um they feel threatened. They feel like they need to, the very, they need to showcase or show things. I don't know. I, I'm going to be honest with you. So I, for me, and as a female, I always like to, my second guitar player, the person, you know, that, that I like to go out on the road with, um, I always like to have a conversation too, just to see mentally um, where they're at. Because sometimes, you know, I, I, it's amazing how things can become misconstrued so very quickly. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so, but then like you said, like you said, the, the other guys, they're just like, Hey, we love to do your thing. And some people, are you kidding me? It's, um, and I think that some of it too, is like, like, for instance, you see the clothes I wear. I love wearing sexy clothes. I like wearing, you know, that's just me. I'm always going to be that person. And I always tell people then perhaps I just have bad taste in, in clothes, but I like to come with the little things. I mean, you know, and so sometimes people, you know, a lot of guys will say, Oh, she's doing that because she's trying to distract from playing. And I'm like, no. So I, I'm a yeah I'm a woman and I like to wear this and this is why I noticed your red lips I like red lipstick I mm -hmm. hell it's a part of me and um yeah so I'm always that person that I think is constantly getting the butt of why is she wearing these clothes why are you wearing why do you look this way why do you and I'm thinking why not I'm a female and I I, I like it I like to wear these things so 
I think I'm, I'm getting the whole, she's playing one thing, she's looking another, still. So, still, even after all this oh, time, Jesus. Yeah, but when it comes to look, yeah, absolutely. But it's crazy because it is. You look good. You mm-hmm. you know you love wearing clothes. You're into fashion and stuff like that. Like, why does that mean that you then can't play guitar just because you're into those other things? It's just. And rough. I got to tell you, this is like the fight. And it's so funny. I saw Joanne Shaw Taylor put something up where someone was saying, "May I guess maybe she wore something or did something different." And the guy and there's literally a tweet that she put up, and he was saying, "You know, I was really behind you until you actually wore this outfit." And I'm like, what? And, and yeah, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, then she literally put up and said to the ladies, listen, if any of you guys are coming up and um, you're seeing getting this, please tag me in and I'll go speak on your behalf. And it's it's just wild because, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I will I just, always, yeah. Yeah, I just can't believe that in this day and age, because I'm being naive that it's like there's more women playing guitars now. You know, it's accepted that you yeah. know, men accept that basically women can play guitar. That's you know, right. just as good as them, if not better. Um, and yet still this is going on, which just a hundred percent. Really amazing. A hundred percent. Especially what was for clothes. And then I mean also you know, the great thing is that, you know. We see more partnerships taking place, but I mean, still, we still need more partnerships with major corporations and signature guitars for female artists. Um, you know, that this is so important because I have always said that, you know, people say rock is dead, guitar is dead, and I always say, no, it just, I think you're looking at, looking in the wrong place and it, it's women. Women are actually playing the guitar and it's not how everybody is thinking. So I'm like, everybody's bringing something completely different to the game. So you, you should embrace that and, and, and enjoy it. And there's a room for all of us. It's kind of like back when everybody was looking at all the greatest, you know, guitar players and all the guys were there. Now I think it's just, it's women. And what's happening is now at least people are, are paying attention to us. And I'm excited about that. And I still think that because there are so many different levels to this game, mm-hmm. um, we still haven't had tons of women on covers. So, I mean, you would think about it. There's so many different uh, layers and levels and it's so important to, um, I always say we're pop, pop, uh, there are numbers and there's power in numbers. So the more of us who are in certain positions who can speak up and say certain things and also check our, you know, corporations and our partnerships and ask them, how are you on diversity and bringing other people into the fold to uh, incite um partnerships and signature instruments you know it's it's also part of our job as the people who are getting these deals to um, hold those companies to it because a lot of people won't have opportunities and part of our job as i think performers and players is to help to create a seat at the table as well so that's kind of how i see myself um you know and like i said it, it was crazy in the beginning like i had this one guitar full of crystals and i love this roski crystals i've seen how you like I was so embarrassed at first because people were like, why would you want to put crystals all over this guitar? And I'm like, you see what I mean? And I was like, because I think it's nice and it's going to play great. Okay, so it's okay for Eddie Van Halen to stick a load of tape all over his or, you know, but you can't put crystals on yours, sorry. And, yeah. but, but you're right. But but these are the, the as crazy as it sounds, these are the things that um, in the beginning, absolutely. And then obviously now more people are wanting to do it. But um, yeah, you would be amazed. Exactly that, a hundred percent. And um, I think the more that, and, and honestly, even when you look online on uh, so all social media, I think it's so cool how you know there are all types of women who play. We all like, which is yeah. what you want, which is what it should be. And I just, um, yeah, I, 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 for me. I'm glad to contribute, like what you said earlier, the fashion aspect. I like that. So, I mean, and I, you know, even when you start talking about certain guitar magazines, I remember early on, it was so wild how um, one of my first shoots, I I was like, hey, so obviously, is there a makeup and hair budget? And they're like, no, we don't do that for the guys. (laughs) I mean, like, like, look at this, like so many different things. I was like, oh. So then I started going, this is interesting. So I felt bad because I was like, you know, had my publicist say, you know, because normally when you do fashion, there's always a makeup and hair person. So they're like, no, of course, no, we we don't do that for any of the guys. Why why would we do this for for the girls? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, because we are, I mean, that's a part of my brand. I mean, I like makeup and hair and this is 
a big deal to me. So and actually, oh that's God. rubbish because some guys do wear makeup. And right. like, you know, like I, I've done shoots with big rock bands before, and management has asked, "Will there be, will there that's be right. grooming, as they call it, grooming, not makeup?" Yes. So yes. yes. And so I just said, you know what? Because this is important to me. Um, you start to understand and learn a lot of the business. So I said, okay, great. I'm gonna take care of my own glam squad because I want these pictures to be great. And I understand that maybe you haven't had a lot of females in this particular magazine. And maybe you guys aren't um, working with a, a bigger budget. I don't know, but yeah. So it's like little things like this. And then also, I mean, it, it was crazy. And then you spend all this time on these shoots. And then all of a sudden I was, I remember seeing the picture and I thought, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed because you, you start to realize that there are all these digs that'll take place. And I wasn't crazy. And other people were like, oh my God. And I felt really like, this is embarrassing. I th I'm like, I spent all this money on my shoot and this is what came out. And um, they did apologize oh, good. and uh, we moved on. But it's just the fact that you 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 start, it's like being one of the first ones to do so many things. It's, um, you know, you start to realize that there the changes. And so now moving forward, you know, you still want to have, for me, I'm still going to bring that squad in just because it's important. And I feel that there are other women who also want to bring the same thing. So at least you're helping the other magazines to realize, hey, you're going to have women. Yeah. We're going to do covers. These are part of what's going on. You're going to have to find these budgets. This is what it is. And um, we're going to love fashion. We're going to want certain things because we're women. This is a part of what's going on. See, there's, yeah. there's like you, there's Joanne Shaw Taylor, mm -hmm. you've got Orianthe, yeah. there's, there's, and there's loads of others coming up. I love I can't all those Imagine, women. I can't imagine what it must have been like for people like Nancy Wilson, Jennifer oh. Batten, stuff like that. I mean, it must have been horrific for them. Are like, you kidding me? Absolutely. They must be tough cookies. Yeah. Can I tell you something? You have to be. And then for me, I go and being black. Yeah. So, I mean, so you put that in the mix. So, and the kicker is this in the beginning, like you go, this is never like a, a thing. Like, I'm just like, of course I'm black. I'm a woman. It's not even a, like a question. Just who you are. So, but, yeah. You haven't even. Right. Yeah. So when you start doing certain meetings, you realize, well, why is that an issue? You guys are the ones bringing it up. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me. So yeah. then you start to realize, okay, so not only am I dealing with certain levels of just being a woman, I'm a black woman. And I'm actually doing something completely different. So now I have to literally work harder and do different things that most people wouldn't ordinarily do just to gain the respect that I'm looking to get. And then you start to real, yeah, you're going to develop thick skin. And for me, what I always say is get around people who are better than you seriously and learn. And I check the ego at the door and, and be a student of life. And no matter what I want, I treat people the way I want to be treated. And Always for me, I, I look at it and I say, you know what, perhaps it's a small oversight that they aren't aware. And I always give everyone it's a small oversight and we will fix whatever you guys are going through because I want this to be great, too. And um, yeah, and that's it. And you just and, and, and not put anything to heart, because like I said, when you are the first one to do so many things, you are going to encounter the craziest things ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that the first to do many things like you have yeah. you know like if you think about all these doors that you've kicked down like the first to have your signature strings Thank um you. first to play um the uh national anthem mm -hmm. at the uh, sporting event mm -hmm. i mean there's mm -hmm. lots of these firsts for you mm -hmm. and especially like you say as an african-american woman mm -hmm. Do you feel that like since maybe Black Lives Matter and everything like that that happened, do you felt like there was a change at least, like something positive? Did Excellent all that? question. Okay. Excellent question. Yes. In Good. fact, what I said was, what is crazy is I wrote my album, Bad As I Want to Be. This album came out in 2018. This was my yeah. very first number one album. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this album because I realized, oh my God, it's not me. There's something that's taking place. And I was like, it's the DNA of America. It is what's happening. The racism that people don't understand that is so embedded in what's going on that yeah. they have this vision of certain things that they cannot um, let go of this. So then I, I just remember going, you know what? I'm celebrating myself. If nobody wants to clap for me, I'm clapping for myself. 
Okay. I am, this is what this is. And that's where the statement, when you don't see yourself represented, show up, when you think you can't show up and always know you matter and you count. That is why I wrote that song enough. It was because I had enough of seeing certain magazines not represent us all in the right way. And I thought these people are completely doing this wrong. They don't realize that they're going to pretty much erase the whole guitar industry because you have to move forward with change. If you don't, it's, it, you're going to be redundant. And then when the murder of George Floyd happened, suddenly it was like the world did a reset and people started looking and they were saying, wait a minute, you know what? Maybe we haven't been fair. Maybe we haven't really created opportunities. Maybe there's something really here. And I often say that since 2020, I felt like I was in the dark and someone turned the light on and suddenly I am seen. Now, suddenly, like you were saying, um, it was amazing. I actually had played the national anthem in 2010 when we did it for the Vikings. And then since then, so many great moments came out of that. They end up taking the clothes and I had them on display at the Hard Rock. And then after the murder of George Floyd, suddenly that song Enough had a resurgence. And then the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ended up taking the outfit that I had from the Enough video with the guitar and suddenly everything that we talked about is now center front and center and people are saying hey you know what I, you were right like and and it's such a, a good feeling because um even with cer certain major brand companies i've been saying you guys you have some of the badass women ever playing your instrument i have no idea why we don't see more signature guitars with these women mm -hmm. these ladies are incredible and the response I was getting was not a very good response. And suddenly, after the murder of George Floyd, it you know, people really knew this whole story. I think that, um, and one day, let me say this, I will absolutely say that, which is honestly what my next album is about. It's called Dirty. And yeah. the reason I did Dirty was because during the pandemic, I was actually being bullied by a major corporation. And I thought, holy shit, this is crazy. Like, how, what is going on right now? How, how could you do this? Like, this is, we have this relationship. This is not good. This is not. And suddenly I just started writing. So if you listen to the words and you see what's going on, I'm actually talking about, um, and, and I always say this to people. People always said, Melina, is this about your fiance? No, it, my relationship with my fiance is, is amazing. This is about a relationship that you can have with so many different things. And I was like, just so broken and hurt and I couldn't believe it. And that's when I realized, Oh my God, these people, they, they don't get it. They don't get it. You're thinking like dinosaurs. And so um, that's how the song, that's how the album Dirty came out. And I put it in certain, uh, I actually listed the song in certain a certain order. And the album is about taking the high road when someone does you wrong. And the reason that you have to take the high road is because spiritually and emotionally, this was absolutely draining me and it was killing my spirit. So I had to let that go in order to just live and forgive. And I just started writing and that's how this album came out. So that's why it's actually called 30. And you go through certain levels in forgiveness before you can find peace. So in the beginning, I wrote it out with You Ain't The One and then a song called Fine, which stands for fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotionally unstable. Because that's how they had me feeling. It was a roller coaster ride. It was crazy. And then you can you know what I mean? Then you keep going through it and then suddenly, you know, maybe it could be back to love again, which is when we started coming up with the order of sex where it's like, this is so magical. We're, this is a great thing. And then you realize these people are full of shit. <laughs> and then that's when you go, yeah, then you go to, to what do you stand for? And then that's when I thought to myself, it doesn't matter. What matters is my, my integrity, my character, and who I am as a person. And that no matter what, I will not change that for anyone. Yeah. And, and, that's when I put that, that is the stamp of the last song. What do you stand for? And um, I was also doing an ode to Sly and Family Stone. On their album, I think, Stan, they had a song called Don't Call Me the N-Word Whitey. And it was basically like a, a stance, political stance that was taking place. And for me, I just felt like this is, I feel like I'm in battle with my life against these people and my spirit. And I was like, you know what? I'm taking back my power because I gave you too much of my power. And that, that is why I'm saying to, to women and to people, celebrate yourself. And then if something isn't working in the, in the favor and the way that you see it, 
I believe in God. And for me, God's rejection is God's protection. Maybe there's something else that you can do. Maybe there's something okay. else that has to happen. And then what I also believe is that karma's a bitch. And let me tell you something, that will come back around again. And I do believe, and I, you know, and I should never say these things, but it's like, you know, if you are moving with the right intention and you do the right thing and everything is coming from an ethic, ethically and a moral good, a morally good place, nothing but good will actually come from that. And so for me, in order to move on, like I said, I wrote the album. And so, yeah, so with, when the whole thing with, with, with George Floyd happened, it was the one take of now I'm actually being seen. So on one side, certain things that I had always been going for started to manifest. And I was like, I wasn't crazy. So it was, you know, basically it's kind of like you're underground and you're just knocking and knocking and knocking and then nothing's happening. And then one day, suddenly you knock and then you're just here. But the good news is you've been ready. You've been ready because you've been doing this every yeah. day and now everyone is, is really watching. So now you show what you, I think for anybody, one thing that we've always said is just please give me an opportunity. I, I'm not asking for the part. Just give me the opportunity to show you what I can do. That's it. That, that's all I've been ever, ever, I think it's what anybody wants. And so finally, that's what's happening. And then for me, I'd say at the same time, uh, I created so many of my own opportunities and you have to. You know what I mean? Because if you're going to navigate through the business, that's what you're going to have to do. Look at how we all pivoted. Once that happened, everything stopped. Suddenly you start to go, okay, maybe we may not be playing shows anymore. I don't know. So then suddenly you start to realize too, oh my God, you know, I love to speak. I love people. Maybe there's something else for me as well. And then suddenly beautiful podcasts, beautiful, uh, you know, everybody's on Instagram. And I feel like the world was more connected and I met so many cool people mm -hmm. and it's just been incredible and I love it. And I, I, I'm, to me, that was one of the best things that actually came out of um, having to reset. And then also realizing that everything that my parents always told me as a kid that is possible, 100%, I believe that now. I always believed it, but now I actually believe, you know what, why? Because I'm actually seeing other people who look like me in other positions and they're coming out and they're saying, this is what I want to do. I mean, think about it. You, the Golden Globes, it blew me away that the Golden Globes didn't have one African-American, one minority person who was a member in the Globes. Yet they were doing all these films and giving their take on different African-American films. How is that even possible if you don't have it? So, I mean, none of us knew. Have they not no, changed that too. then? They're on those two. But, okay, good. But they okay. change it. But what I'm saying is, can you imagine operating like that for years and none of us actually knew? And we're wondering, well, how come we aren't getting seen? How come we're, we're not getting more nominations? This is crazy. That's so, fun. yes. And after that, companies started going, you know what? Maybe we need to look at everything. Maybe we should, people, not only just us as artists, what about behind the scenes? Mm. What about, you know, writers? What about the directors? What about stories? What about just everything? Suddenly it was kind it became, okay, we're wrong. And for me, I'm a woman of, of apology. I love when someone is honest and real because honestly, human connection is the most important thing. And then once we all connect, we realize we are totally the same, totally the same, but different, but the same. And I love people and I, we all really love love, right? And it's nothing to be kind to people. So I'm like, there's room for everybody. So let's just make it work.